All right, there is this famous limit sine x over x as x goes to zero this converges to one and this equality is usually proved by using L'Hopital's rule that is since sine x converges to zero and x also converges to zero then we can apply L'Hopital's rule so if we that is if we differentiate both numerator and denominator we get cos x in the numerator and 1 in the denominator. So this is, is it, it's easy to see that this converges to 1. So, so far so good, and this seems okay, but uh, there is actually one problem with this proof. So, what is it? That is, when using L'Hopital's rule, we differentiate this function sine x to get cosine x, right? But uh, how did we prove this equality? That's the problem. So let's review how we get the derivative of the sine function. So let's go back to the definition of the derivative. Uh, sine x plus h minus sine x over h. And let's move h to 0. So to calculate this limit, we use some uh, trigonometric identities uh, h equal to 0 so sine of this minus sine x is 2 times uh, what is it cosine x plus h over 2 and sine h over 2 uh, divided by h so here we have limit h equal to 0 cosine x plus h over 2 times so we have here sine h over 2 and let's move this 2 to denominator and we have h over 2 okay so this part converges to cosine x and this part converges to 1 but here we are actually using this identity right we are actually using this limit you see the problem here? That is, when we try to prove sine x over x converges to 1 as x goes to 0, we used the fact that the derivative of sine x is cosine x, right? So this depends on this fact. But when we try to prove this, the derivative of sine x is cosine x, we actually used this limit. So it's a circular logic, circular dependency. So that is, uh, if we use L'Hopital's rule to prove this equality, then we are trapped. Okay. So in order to, in order to get out of this trap, then we have to prove this without using L'Hopital's rule. We have to prove this, uh, we have to derive this derivative without using this identity. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, let's try proving this without L'Hopital's rule here. Okay, now let's consider a unit circle. Okay, so unit circle means uh, its radius is 1. Uh, radius is 1 and consider the angle of x. So since it's a unit circle, this length, okay, let's use red color here. So this length is sine x, okay? And now the area of this, uh, let's see, this fan-shaped area, okay? This area is given by one half, and uh, radius is one, so it's just one, and uh, x. Okay, so this, the area of this uh, fan shaped area is one over two times x. Now, uh, what about the area of, of uh, this triangle, this red triangle? Okay, since this length here, the base is 1, and this height, 
it's sine x. So this is given by 1 over 2, 1 times sine x. And obviously, this red triangle is included, completely buried in this fan-shaped uh, fan area. So that means this is less than or equal to 1 over 2x. Okay, next, consider the tangent line at this point. Okay, so from here, we draw this tangent line. So since it's a tangent to the circle here, this unit circle, this angle here is 90 degrees, so it's half pi. Now consider the area of, uh, of this blue triangle. Okay, now since it's right angle here, and this length is 1, of course, what is this length? If we know this, then uh, we know we can calculate the area, right? Uh, actually, since this angle here, uh, it's hard to see now. Okay, this area is uh, this angle is x. So, and this length, the radius is one. So this length here, this edge, the length is tangent x. Right. So the area of this, let's say, black triangle is 1 over 2 and 1 times tangent x. And this black triangle completely includes this fan-shaped area. So this is, uh, this is greater than 1 over 2x times x. Yeah, this is less than or equal to 1 half tangent x. So we have this inequality and this inequality. So let's uh, rearrange this one a little bit so we can cancel this 1 half. So that means sine x is less than or equal to x. So if we divide both sides by x, we have sine x over x is less than or equal to 1. Okay. Now, tangent x is, by definition, sine x over cosine x. So if we compare these uh, signs, we have x less than or equal to sine x over cosine x. So let's multiply both sides by cosine x and divide both sides by x. We have cosine x is less than or equal to sine x over x. You know, since we are taking the limit of x going to 0, we can assume that this x, oh, this x is sufficiently small. So the signs of sine x and cosine x, uh, we can assume they are all positive. Okay, so that's why uh, these inequalities don't change uh, if we divide or multiply by these quantities. Okay, so we have this and this. So that means, let's uh, summarize this. So cosine x is less than or equal to sine x over x, which is less than or equal to 1. Now, if we move x towards 0, then cosine x converges to 1. So this is stays 1. So by the squeeze theorem, we can say that sine x over x converges to 1. And we are done. So now we, we have proved that this limit is 1 without using L'Hopital's rule. So now the circular dependency is absent.